the operating principles of a two pole or a full bridge inverter can be better understood by going through a detailed example problem. In this video, we will look at an example of uh, calculating the uh, control voltages required in steady state in order to achieve uh, various uh, power flow specifications. We will do this by the uh, method of phasor analysis and uh, finally we will um, uh, represent each of these uh, phases in a phasor diagram and correlate the phases with their corresponding time domain average quantities. Okay, here is the example two pole converter with the uh, pole A and pole B shown explicitly. So this two pole converter interfaces a DC voltage source with an AC grid. It is given that the uh, DC voltage is, is fixed at 450 volts and the AC grid is uh, 240 volts RMS 60 Hertz single phase AC system. So the 340 is really square root 2 times uh, 240 and uh, 377 of course is uh, 2 pi 60. The converter interfaces to the grid through a uh, single L filter as shown here and uh, it is given that the uh, sum of the inductance of this filter and any series inductance uh, of the grid uh, their sum is given as 2 millihenry. Similarly the resistance of the inductor the filter inductor plus the resistance of any wiring from the terminals to the grid is given as 0.1 ohms. It is also given that um, this two pole converter employs uh, one of the more popular PWM schemes called the unipolar PWM. The problem statement then is to calculate the control voltages for each of these two poles VCA for pole A and VCB for pole B and we need to do this for two different cases of uh, different power flows and those are given here. Case 1 is the power flow from the DC side to the AC grid at 5 kilowatt and this power flow should be at a power factor of 0.866 lagging. So the lagging power factor here is defined as uh, the grid current IG lagging the grid voltage VG. So uh, I should uh, assign the current direction so IG defined this way should be lagging VG by um, cos inverse of 0.866 which is uh, 30 degrees. And in another video we will look at uh, a different power flow case which is a reverse power flow from the AC side to the and we will also look at the uh, uh, again in a later video the uh, expressions for the average DC current corresponding to each of these two power flow conditions. Now by the definition of unipolar PWM the two control voltages VCA and VCB are related by this expression. So that is uh, the control voltage for pole B is simply the negative of uh, control voltage for uh, pole A. So VCA is uh, minus VCB. Now just to uh, put it into uh, proper context uh, to say what we really mean by these control voltages let's quickly look at these unipolar PWM waveforms. Okay, so in unipolar PWM we have a single triangular carrier waveform, that's this red waveform, and this is at the switching frequency. So to this we compare uh, two modulating signals or control voltages, VCA, and the negative of that is VCB, the blue waveform. So the points of intersection of each of these two um, sinusoidal signals with the triangular waveform determines the instance at which pole A and pole B switch and uh, so these are VAN and VBN and their instantaneous difference is the complete converted output, converted PWM output which is this VAB and uh, our problem is to calculate this uh, these two control signals. Okay, let's go back to our uh, original slide here. In our analysis of a two-pole converter, we defined something called as the effective duty ratio, D, and D is nothing but DA minus DB, where DA is the duty ratio of pole A and DB is the duty ratio of pole B. And we also showed that this effective duty ratio, D, is same as the control voltage, VC, and VC is constrained to be between 0 and 1 for a V-triangle amplitude of uh, 1 volt. We also derive the uh, average model, the cycle by cycle average model of a two pole converter 
based on this ideal transformer. So essentially we replace all the switching elements by an ideal transformer whose uh, turns ratio is equal to the instantaneous uh, effective duty ratio which we just now showed that uh, is same as the control voltage VC. So therefore the uh, average model is um, a transformer with a turns ratio of 1 to control voltage VC with all the other linear elements from the switching model uh, retained as they are. So we have the DC source and we have the RL elements and the grid um, shown here. I should emphasize that this is only a mathematical model and we can apply as then here a DC voltage to the primary. Uh, in fact this model only represents the um, um, the controlled voltage and current sources as in this implementation. So essentially the uh, the primary current is simply the uh, turns ratio which is uh, D or VC times the secondary current which in this case is IG and the uh, secondary voltage is a controlled voltage source of magnitude equal to the uh, turns ratio which is D or VC times the primary voltage which in this case is the VD so that is the uh, secondary voltage which is VAB average and also note that every quantity in this um, um, average model is a CCA average quantity so the DC current is ID with a bar on top denoting it is an average quantity similarly on the secondary side this is VAB average with a bar on top IG um, a bar on top indicating it's an average value so from the uh, basic principles or from uh, either of these two average model implementations we can see that the uh, VAB uh, average I should um, clearly show the bar on top to show that it is an average quantity. So VAB average is uh, VC times VD. Similarly, if you want the uh, DC current average value ID with a bar on top, again let me put the bar explicitly. So that is equal to VC times the secondary current IG. Okay, so our objective is to calculate this control voltage VC. So if you know VC, then uh, VCA and VCB can be immediately uh, known. So our approach is to calculate this uh, VAB average. And once we know VAB average, then uh, uh, knowing this V sub D, we can calculate VC uh, from, uh, from this equation here. Now how do we calculate VAB average? For that, we will do a KVL around this uh, secondary side loop. And we will do this KVL using phasers for each of these um, voltage drops and uh, the grid voltage. Now I should also clearly emphasize that the phasor analysis can be done only with a single fundamental frequency. Um, so if you're, if you're dealing with uh, the cycle by cycle average model, even though VAB by itself is a PWM switching waveform, VAB average is, um, at least in this case, is a pure sinusoidal quantity at the uh, grid frequency or 60 hertz. Um, uh, and so is the, the IG and uh, VL again it's a, a large pulsating waveform instantaneously but once we take the uh, cycle by cycle average it is only a sinusoidal component at 60 hertz so essentially we are only dealing with the fundamental components of each of these um, voltages and currents and therefore we can use phasor analysis now in order to use KVL around uh, the secondary loop we need to calculate what this grid current IG is. So let's do that first. And now we are um, solving the case one where we need a 5 kilowatt power flow from the DC side to the grid at uh, a lagging power factor of 0.866. Now we know that in a single phase system the uh, real power or the active power PG is given as VRMS times IRMS times cosine theta uh, but this VG uh, hat which denotes the peak value of VG uh, so that is equal to uh, or VG peak is uh, square root 2 times uh, VG RMS. Similarly, IG peak is also square root times IG RMS. Therefore, V RMS times I RMS is the same as VG peak IG peak over 2. So that is the complete expression for the active power in this uh, single phase system. And um, substituting the values, uh, IG hat, the peak value of IG comes out to be Pg times 2, so that's 5000 times 2 on the uh, numerator, and this is uh, Vg peak 340, and cosine theta is uh, 0.866 as given in the problem statement. 
So from that, the um, peak value of the grid current comes out to be 33.96 amperes. Next, we come to the actual phase analysis. Um, in most problems, it is uh, convenient to use the known grid voltage as the reference phaser. So in this case, the uh, time domain uh, grid voltage is given as 340 sine omega t. Um, the convention that we are going to use uh, here is to uh, uh, let the magnitude of the phaser be the peak value of the corresponding time domain quantity. Uh, others uh, may use the RMS as the magnitude, but here we use the peak of the time domain quantity as the magnitude of the phaser. So VG as a phaser, the uh, upper bolded letters denote phasers. So VG phaser is 340 angle 0 degrees, which is the angle in the corresponding time domain expression at t equals 0. Similarly, the uh, phaser representing the grid current IG is uh, the peak value which we just now calculated is 33.96 so this uh, IG phaser is 33.96 angle of minus 30 degrees it's minus 30 degrees it comes from the problem statement of 0.866 lagging per factor so cost inverse of 0.866 is uh, 30 degrees and we are given that the current lags the voltage so it is um, minus 30 degrees in the phaser Okay, so now knowing the current uh, IG, we can calculate the um, voltage drops across the resistor and the inductor. So VR is, uh, as a phasor, is simply R, its impedance, times the current IG as a phasor. Uh, so R is 0.1, IG is uh, this 33.96 angle minus 30 degrees, gives the um, resistor drop to be a, a small voltage, 3.4 volts. Uh, with an angle of minus 30 degrees with respect to the um, reference phaser, which is the grid voltage. Um, similarly, VL is uh, its impedance times IG, and its impedance is J omega L in phaser analysis, where omega is 377. So therefore, uh, VL is 377 times 2 millihenry times IG, which, is 30, which has a magnitude of 33.96. The total angle of uh, VL is uh, this 90 degrees due to the J plus the angle of IG. So therefore it is 90 degrees uh, minus 30 degrees to give uh, a total of 60 degrees and the magnitude comes out to be 25.6 volts. So that is the VL as a phaser. Okay, now we are in a position to calculate this um, VAB phaser which is uh, simply the sum of uh, the grid voltage, the inductive drop VL phaser and the rest will drop VR. So VAB, VG plus VL plus VR, just uh, substitute the corresponding values. VG is 340 angle 0, VL is here 25.6 angle 60 degrees, and the VR is 3.4 minus 30 degrees. Uh, you can convert uh, the uh, polar form into rectangular form to do the addition, and finally uh, we get the VAB phaser to be a magnitude of 356.33 volts, with a phase angle of uh, 3.295 degrees. Now, as a check, we can see that the uh, phase of VAB has a leading phase angle with respect to the grid voltage. Now, in uh, any AC system where you have two voltage sources separated by a predominantly inductive impedance, the active power flows from the source which has the leading phase angle. Now, in this example, power flow is from the DC side through the two-pole converter, uh, whose output is this uh, AC voltage VAB, and to the grid, the power flow is to the grid. Therefore, we expect the VAB source to have the leading phase angle, and uh, that checks with what we just derived. Okay, uh, now that we have the um, phaser VAB calculated, it's easy to get the control voltage VC as a phaser. So, VC is simply VAB divided by the DC link voltage magnitude 450. So therefore, VC as a phaser is 356.33 divided by 450, which is 0.792, and has the same angle as that of VAB phaser, because VD is uh, simply a constant value. Finally, convert this uh, VC phaser to the corresponding time domain to get VC of T. So that will be a, will be a sinusoidal signal with a peak value of 0.792 and a frequency of uh, 377 radians per second and from this angle um, 
the expression is sine 377t plus 3.295 degrees and uh, in this uh, switching model uh, corresponding to a unipolar PWM we know that the control voltage for leg A is simply same as the VC that we calculated so VCA is VC and the control voltage for leg B is minus VC therefore VCB is uh, minus 0.792 sine omega t plus 3.295 degree volts so if we went ahead and applied these voltages VC and VCB with the corresponding DC and grid voltages we will see that we get a 5 kilowatt of power flow from the DC to AC side at 0.866 uh, lagging power factor. Uh, we will verify that in simulation in one of the later videos.